What's the difference between getting the capsaicinoids in a whole food versus a supplement? Is a supplement more concentrated, more tolerable it, because of the heat? Or? It, it is. It, it's, I think the bottom line is a whole lot more convenient for mm -hmm. individuals to do that. Um, depending on you know, which part of the world you're focusing on, in the, in the U.S. and in Europe, the capsaicinoid content in terms of consumption per capita is very low. If you look at other areas such as Mexico, Thailand, India, per capita consumption of capsaicinoids is extremely high. Mm -hmm. So I think those individuals really would not necessarily need a, a capsaicinoid in a, in a capsule format because they're consuming so much mm -hmm. in their typical cuisine. But many individuals, of course, in the States, you know, as well as abroad, may not prefer, you know, such foods. Mm -hmm. So they can ingest the capsaicinoids in, a, in an encapsulated format without really altering overall dietary intake, number one. Number two, a lot of people, frankly, can't tolerate it. Mm -hmm. We're talking, you know, major heat release from these particular pungent principles. And a lot of individuals, I think both of us know those who really can't tolerate hot, spicy mm -hmm. foods. So... With that being the case, the encapsulated version for a lot of individuals would probably be the only option for them if they're truly trying to obtain the, uh, the, the, the amount of capsaicinoids that would be necessary for you know, some sort of optimal benefit. Mm -hmm.